Hi, my name's Starsky and welcome to From the Studio on Clubbing TV. In this episode, I'm going to be taking a look at some of the basics of Euro Rack sequences. And before I get into this, I'm gonna have to apologize for the level of geekery that's about to come your way. It's never a good way to start something having to excuse yourself for what you're about to do, but there's no way I can talk in any depth about your Iraq without your sort of inner nerd making a star appearance. Now the uh, apologies over, let's jump straight in. In a previous episode, a couple of months back, I looked at how to generate a basic tone using the building blocks. So an oscillator, a filter, an envelope, and an amplifier. So today I'm gonna dig a bit deeper, looking on how you can control all those using sequences. And there are tons of options here. There are literally hundreds of different modules out there, but they all create the same basic outputs that are used to, to control the whole system and that's what I'm going to look at in this episode as well as demonstrate a few of the variations that I've got here in front of me. So let's start off by looking at the fundamental components of any sequencer. There are four types of signal we need to think about when looking at sequences. The first and the most simple is called a trigger and these send just a really short pulse to trigger an event. So I'll just plug this in here and this is a trigger for a kick drum on a 4-4 and you can just see the regular really quick triggering of the envelope. Like I say, that's just a really small pulse. So on an envelope, it's immediately opened and released. Like you've sort of quickly hit a piano key or a drum. You can have a nice long release on that and a long tail to the sound, but you can't hold it on. If you want to hold it on, you've got to use a gate. And that's the second sort of signal we're going to look at. So if we take a gate out of this Erica Black Sequencer, we can see here I'm changing the length of it. And you can tie notes together so you can get really long gates. So unlike a trigger, which is hitting a piano key, on this, it's like holding the piano key down. And here you can see the LED is staying on for a lot longer. Unlike a trigger then, which is just a quick on, this can stay on for as long as you like. And because this envelope generator can take a gate or a trigger input, we can hear the difference between the two of them. So the gate. It's holding the note on. And we go to the trigger. And that just gives a really short blast. So if you want to make long notes, you're gonna to have to have a sequencer that has a gate output that you can change the length of those notes. And then we come to control voltages and these send out a constant signal between a range of values. And if we look here again on the black sequencer, we can see we're just sending out on this channel a range of control voltages. But as we know, control voltages are used to control just about everything else on a modular system. So all these inputs and outputs here are sending CVs to everything else. And that's the beauty of Euro racks. But finally, we need to think about the clock signal so we can time everything in the sequencer or from the sequencer or to the sequencer. So you'll have to have on your rack some way of sending the BPM to everything. Some sequencers have got internal clocks like the black sequencer does, the qubit does, others don't. So the Make Noise Rene that I've got here doesn't have an internal clock. The Steppy doesn't have an internal clock. But I'm not going to go into too much detail in each of these. There just isn't time. But hopefully it'll give you an idea of the sort of things that you should be looking out for. If you are interested in looking at it in more depth, check out my Starsky Car YouTube channel where I've got this set up and I go through each of them in a lot more detail. So let's start off by taking a look at the Rene, shall we? Now this is the super cool little sequence that you'll see all over the place. This is version one, there's a version two out now as well. But it's amazingly flexible and can do all sorts of things, but you've really got to understand how it works, which can be a bit daunting at first. At its most basic, it just runs through each of these 16 different nodes in different patterns, depending on the inputs. And each of these 16 nodes has got a different note tuned by just twisting the knob like that. 
but it's how it moves through the grid that's really interesting here. It calls itself a Cartesian sequencer because it relies on X and Y input. So instantly we sound like we're talking about maths and it's got logic functions and the ands, and ors, exclusive ors, and it starts getting quite complex, but it is really good fun. And I'll just show you really quickly how it works. We've got these various modes we can assign here. So let's put this snake mode on. And when we go back here, we can see now it's moving through all the different nodes. And then we can change the way it's snaking through here with this knob. So that's like a spiral. It's running up vertically. Diagonally, so there's lots of different things you can do and if you bring in something to the Y as well You can have them interacting in all sorts of different ways and that's what makes this really nice And as I say, it's so complex you could probably do an hour or a two-hour video just looking at this Let's move over to the next one now that I've got here and that's the Qubit Bloom And this is maybe a little easier to understand. We've got two channels here. We've got a, a, the blue channel and this green channel. We've got the CV outs, we've got the gate outs, and we've got a clock out as well. And we can also bring the clock in and control it externally. So all of a sudden, really flexible and like an all-in-one unit. And actually it's the first one I bought. And we can switch these on and off. We can change the tuning of them. We can save it as a pattern. There's all sorts of things we can do. It's got really good visual feedback on this. We can see we're changing the length. Here we're changing the scale. So it's a really nice little sequence of this. And like the Rene calls itself a Cartesian sequencer, this calls itself a fractal sequencer because we've got these two knobs here, path and branches they're called. And these self-generate different notes in the sequences and take it further away and then back to the original things. So really quite weird, but nice. So let's take a look at the next one along and that's the Turing machine. Like the Rene, this doesn't have an internal clock, so you need an LFO or a clock or something to give a regular pulse to move it through each of the steps. So in this case, I think I'll use the Bloom to do that. So that's pure random <laughs> madness, and that's what the Turing machine does. It creates random CVs, but you can freeze them when you get something nice. So let's try that. When I say nice, Quite interesting though. And again, I'm rushing through this, but if we put a gate out onto an envelope generator, for example, we could pick which of those notes we wanted to play. But just to show you quickly, on the right-hand side here, I've got this expansion called the voltages. And if we come out from this one, I'm now using these sliders here to control the voltages, so. That's now acting like a really old school sequencer. But they are just random voltages, they're not tuned to anything. So if you put that up against the baseline, for example, you couldn't ever get it in tune without using a quantizer. So the next thing we're gonna look at is the tip top quantizer. What this does is it takes random CVs and it quantizes them so you can with this sort of keyboard that you can see here, you can pick which notes you want it to play. So let's try and put the Turing machine through the quantizer. I'm demoing that because you may well need one depending on how you set up your Euro rack. So that Rene has got a quantized output, the Qubit's got a quantized output, but the Turing machine doesn't. So let's move over to something now that doesn't send out CVs at all, just sends out triggers or gates, and that's the IntelliGel Steppy. And this is a fabulous little unit for sequencing drums. We've got four tracks with 64 steps on each. So we've got, see here, we've got outputs A, B, C, and D. So that could be a snare drum, a kick drum, a hi-hat, and an open hi-hat. 
and I use it for sequencing the Endorphins Black Noir drum machine. So let's just set this up. Again, this one doesn't have a clock, so we need to clock it from something like the Black Sequencer. And we can see instantly it's starting to do stuff. Let's put it onto channel one. And I'm demoing this one because if you don't need to send the CV out from a sequencer, you just want to do something like a rhythm track or you want to just trigger certain events, you can save yourself a bit of cash by getting something like the Steppy that doesn't bother with CVs, it just sends out those triggers. And then finally, let's take a look at the black sequencer from Erica. Black Sequencer is an all-in-one solution and it's a recent release and it's basically become my main sequencer now. It's so flexible, it's insane. It's got four tracks, but each of these four tracks has got a CV out, a gate out, and then a modulation output. And this can be used to send all sorts of signals and envelopes to each track. Let's just take a quick look at that actually. So we can send CV data, we can send CV note data, so you can send additional notes so it doesn't have to be modulation, it's actually quantized to notes. You've got decay envelopes. So if we go in here, we've got a different decay envelope on every step. Got ASR envelopes on every step. Got an ADSR envelope. And this means, for example, if you've got four tracks playing, you don't necessarily need for envelopes in your rack. You don't need any envelopes in your rack because you've got them in the sequencer. It's absolutely stunning, really. What else have we got? Got LFOs. We can change the rate of the LFO. We can change the shape of the LFO. So again, really, really tons of stuff. And I'm sort of falling in love with this thing because it can do so much. And what's important to me from this one is that not only can it do so much, but it's really easy to pick up. Once you've had a little play with it, you can't get lost. It's really really obvious how you do things. Unlike something like the Rene, that's really complex and you've got to really get your head around it. On this, it's just super simple to understand. The Erica Black plus the Steppy gives me up to 12 tracks of sequencing, which, which is more than enough, I think. And the Rene will allow me to do some more sort of random interweaving patterns at least that's the plan but i might find out that i'm doing that with the erica anyway so maybe i've still not settled and let's face it uh <laughs> never will which is part of the fun and the extreme expense of your iraq so i will have to sell a few of these because can't keep them all well i hope you enjoyed that and if you did don't forget you can catch it whenever you like on our club in tv official youtube channel on the from the studio playlist and if you've got any questions drop them in the comments and I'll see what I can do to answer them. And as I say, I've also got a much longer extended version of this on my Starsky Car YouTube channel. So I'll see you in the next episode of From the Studio. <laughs>